joyful that the Spirit has uh, brought us together, that we find ourselves back home here in this place uh, with each other and mindful of the many of our brothers and sisters who are praying with us at home and sharing the Eucharist in that way. Let's make our prayer today in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. May the grace and may the peace of the Lord be with you all this evening. And with your spirit. As disciples, we claim Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We, we proclaim and profess him like Peter does, that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So let us turn to the Lord seeking forgiveness for the times we have failed in the life of discipleship. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in you we find freedom from sin and fullness of redemption. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to live in the truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, 
son of Helikiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place a key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You build up strength within me. exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the gates to the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus It has been a summer full of uncertainties and um, and things uh, uh, having to learn how to do things differently. But one of the things that's been consistent uh, for us, joyfully consistent throughout the summer months, is that we've been spending these months on Sunday Eucharist at Sunday Eucharist, praying through the Gospel of Matthew, And, and in that great gospel of Matthew, tremendous, full of life and texture. In the gospel of Matthew, chapter 7 is a really important chapter. Jesus in Matthew's gospel is the great teacher, the great rabbi. In chapter 7, there is a section on the short teachings of Jesus, the rabbi, teaching on prayer. We all know it. Asking you will be given, seeking you will find. There's the golden rule. There's the enter through the narrow gate. There's that wonderful phrase uh, and saying that runs all the way through the Gospel of Matthew and joins it together. By their fruits you will know them, not those who say, Lord, Lord, but those who do the will of my Father. And then there's a great teaching, a great little story uh, for, uh, for uh, us to read. Just before uh, Hurricane Marco comes our way, uh, maybe in the next few days or so, teaching about the solid foundation Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like the one who built his house on rock. The rains came, the floods came, uh, the hurricanes came, winds came, but it was built solidly on rock. It was battered by the tempest, but it stood firm. It stood firm. A teaching about the solid foundation on rock in chapter 7. So we get to Peter. Uh, I've been listening and been following Peter these last few weeks. Peter, who did not quite understand the multiplication of the loaves, and the, and Peter, who had tiny faith on the sea, and Peter, who witnessed, witnessed the exchange between Jesus and the Canaanite woman that brought life to her daughter. It's a Peter today who knows. He he knows more than he knows. He knows in his heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he professes that because God has revealed it to him and he has enough faith to know. The mystery of uh, of God has come to life in Peter. He is a man who is open. He's receptive. He's a vessel for the word of God. And God works through him to make his ways known on earth to people. Peter knows who Jesus is. He knows that God is present in Jesus. He knows that Jesus is the savior of the world. And this time, Peter knows and he gets it right. He knows a lot, uh, but in his heart, he knows more than he really knows. And so Jesus, once again, as he has done before, Jesus offers a hand to Peter 
And he helps them understand the unfolding of life in God, of, of a life fully in God. Here's the first thing that Jesus says. It is God who has revealed this to Peter. God has brought life in him. It is God's doing that Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. It is God's doing that Peter is a man of God. So his faith is moving, uh, like ours maybe, right? Because Peter is the one who stands for all of us. His faith is moving from tiny to great. There'll be some uh, bumps on the way in the road, but his faith is moving from tiny toward great. His house is being built on a solid foundation. There is in Peter a growing and a deepening openness to, to the Spirit, to the work of God and Jesus. And so this man, Simon, who is the son of Jonah, is a mother and a father. Simon, he has a heritage and a history. It's uh, this man, Simon, who will be a solid foundation. He will be the rock on and, which, and through which the mystery of God will be built and will unfold. Those who gather for Eucharist tonight here, at home or elsewhere, I think this is both terrific and terrifying news. It's terrific, isn't it, that in that God has placed complete trust in the gathered people of God to be formed and to be molded into a people who embody God's justice and God's compassion, who in their lives and in their shared life make God present to the world and in the world. It's terrific because the work of God continues to this day in the lives of men and women of faith, men and women like you and me. It's terrific because we are entrusted with the work of God, and in a sense, God says, I will live in the world and be known through you. And so we share in the promise of God to, keep, to love every human person and all creation, and its work is entrusted to us. And as our own house, our own personal house inside here, and our shared house is built on a solid foundation, Jesus Christ, that promise of God has a chance to be realized in our time. In a few moments in our Eucharist, as we continue our prayer, we're going to pray this very special prayer. We're going to hear these words prayed together. By your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again and adversaries may join hands. That's the work of the kingdom. That's the work of the spirit in us. We're going to pray these words. By the working of your power, it comes about that hatred is quenched by love, that vengeance gives way to forgiveness, discord is changed to mutual trust. That is the work of the kingdom. And that is terrific news. That is God is at work. It's just at the same time, isn't it? It's kind of terrifying news because that work has been entrusted to us. That work has been put, put on our plate and it's up to us to make it happen. Hatred quenched by love, vengeance to forgiveness, discord to mutual respect. It was entrusted to Peter, the rock, entrusted by Jesus to the church. And it's given into our hands today. For these last few weeks, we've recognized, haven't we, Jesus recognized the great faith of the Canaanite woman and called it out of her into action. He did the same for Peter, calling him the rock. He does the same for us too, firing up in our hearts a knowledge of his presence, stoking our faith, calling it out of us into action, calling us a rock upon which the kingdom is built.
Let's rise and profess and share our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, from all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord's goodness and kindness endures forever. Let us bring before God the needs of all. For wisdom and courage for Pope Francis as he leads our church following in the footsteps of St. Peter. That our political leaders be faithful to the responsibilities for all the people and not just a privileged few. For healthcare workers, delivery and restaurant workers, as well as teachers and caregivers, may care for their safety and appreciation of their work be reflected in all that we do. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whom we encounter who are inquiring about life in Christ, that they may find him in us and how we welcome and serve them. For all married couples, May their unions be built upon the sure foundation of God's love and Jesus' call to service. For all of us gathered in person or in our homes, that as baptized Christians we may exercise the ministry of priest, prophet, and king in serving the church and others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, for those who have died, we especially pray for Eleanor Bonasso, as well as those who mourn. For the prayers offered through our prayer heartline, along with those held in our hearts, may they be joined to the prayers of Mother Teresa, St. Therese, and St. Bernadette. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you set your Son to reveal your face to us. Our prayers, and following the footsteps of the first disciples, we might proclaim him to the world with joy and apostolic fervor. We pray this now to Christ our Lord. Amen.
May that our Eucharist this night be acceptable to God, a loving and almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church. We pray this now through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through Jesus Christ the Lord. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. The revenge gives way to forgiveness and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with choirs of angels, we cry out to you on earth, and without end we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you extend to sinners by the way by which your peace is offered to us. We ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins. You brought us back and to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts now by the outpouring of your spirit. That they may become the body and the blood of your son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. And when he was about to give his life to set us free, he reclined at supper. He himself took bread in his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, pressing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out, for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, humbly we ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, to bestow on us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything, 
It estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Daniel and George, our bishops, and all bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, with St. Bernadette and St. Therese and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now with hearts open and hands lifted, let's pray as Jesus, the teacher, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you all today. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let's rise and pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy. Graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you are able, we celebrate Eucharist now on Tuesday and Thursday morning at 9 o'clock and on Wednesday evening at 7 and on Wednesday evening, two other things happen. We have the sacrament of penance from 6 to 6.30. That's our time now, 6 to 6.30 Wednesday night. And following Eucharist, for about 10 minutes or so, at the end of Eucharist, we have adoration of Blessed Sacrament. So if you can, join us for uh, Tuesday, Thursday morning, or Wednesday evening, Eucharist, right? That's good to be here. It's good. Let's do it again, you think? But again, next week, same time. Is that all right? All right. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And bless us all now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.